Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. This is a day the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. We want to welcome you to our worship service this morning. Pray that God would bless you and that God is blessing you. Thank you for joining us. So we say good morning, Damascus, and to our Facebook family. We pray that we find you blessed and favored of God. We invite you to join in with us now as we worship him in song. Wherever you are, if you would stand to your feet, lift your voice, clap your hands. Let us give God the praise together. say thank you. Lord, you've been good to us. You've blessed us in so many ways. Your grace has flooded us and your mercy has blessed us and we just thank you, Lord, for all that we are in you. We give you honor, glory, and praise for you are worthy. Father, we're living in trying times that we know. But we thank you that in these times we know you. And more importantly, you know us. So we ask you, God, to touch these, your people, those that are suffering with sickness, with sadness, with lack. We just pray, God, that you would meet every need. Lord, as we come, we thank you that your word provides life and hope and help for us. So as we come today with this word, we ask that, Lord, you would allow it to help us as we continue this journey with you. Always my prayer that you give power to the preaching, Lord. Not that I would be lifted, but that you would be glorified. 
and your people will be lifted and edified. For this is my prayer, and I pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Matthew 26, verses 38 through 44. You will find these words. Then saith he unto them, My soul is ex exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he came unto the, unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. We're going to stop there. And we want to preach and talk to you just for a little while from this subject. Prayer from the heart. Prayer from the heart. Amen. We as the people of God are called to be people of prayer. Christians down through the ages and through the years have always been known to spend time seeking God Spend time on their knees in prayer to God for direction, for provision, for protection, and for power. All around the world, both in the darkness of ignorance and in the light of revelation, men and women have knelt and are kneeling in prayer. Unfortunately, sometimes it seems as those who bow in fear and who bow in superstition are more committed to prayer than those who are at rest in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's sad that the characteristic they used to mark the church is now one that mars the church because the church has lost its fervor in prayer. Stiff necks and sore knees or arthritic knees really are what characterize the church today because people refuse to bow in prayer. People refuse to bow and confess their sins before God. People refuse to bow at the altar, at the fountain where the glory of God comes out and cry out, it's me, it's me, it's me that stands in the need of your blessing. Amen. My brothers and sisters, where we are now, it has come to the place where we really need to take to heart the call of prayer by the Spirit of God. We need to bow the knee of our spirit and humble our hearts before our Lord in sincere prayer. I don't mean just saying words. I don't mean vain repetition, repetition. I mean where you come with your heart and you lay bare before God and cry out to him knowing that he is the only one that can do you any good. Truth is, I have to admit that we have a tendency to pray for selfish reasons. Many times when we talk to God, we're only asking him for things instead of thanking him for things. We're always asking. Sometimes we need to just tell him how great he is. Amen. Sometimes we need to just tell him how grateful we are. 
Sometimes we need to just tell him how thankful we are. But the truth is, most of the time we only call on him when we want something from him. Prayer, my brothers and sisters, because of our mindset, we see God as a means to an end, but prayer cannot be understood as simply receiving something from God, receiving favor from God. No, prayer is communication with God. It's a two-way communication where God speaks to you and you speak to God. And when we have that two-way communication as it should be, there is an attitude of gratitude in our hearts. We find ourselves with true humility and lasting hope that is able to overcome all of the pains and the problems, the obstacles and opposition that you find yourself up against. Amen. Prayer from the heart. When we look at this prayer that Jesus makes here, we can see now that he is in a moment of crises. He's in a place where things are about to change in a drastic way. We understand he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's now about to face that lonely walk up towards Calvary's cross to hang up for our hangups, to die for our sins, to pay the penalty that uh, he was destined to do. Here he is now, bowing in sincere and heartfelt prayer to God. Let us look at this prayer. When we examine his prayer, we notice four things that Jesus does in this prayer that's so important to us. First of all, it opens up with him acknowledging God. He says, oh, my father. He acknowledges God as father. When he acknowledges God as father, what he's saying, yes, I'm about to face a crisis. Yes, this is a heavy time in my life. Yes. I'm at a place where I am really weighed with the burden and the pain and the anguish of what I'm about to undertake. And he said, oh, my father. Father is a symbol of protection. Father is a symbol of power, of provision, of providential love. When he says, Father, he's saying that I know that you love me with an everlasting love. I'm hurting right now. I'm calling on you right now, but I still know who you are, and I know what you're able to do. He said, oh, my Father. He understood he had a relationship with him. That was an intimacy that he had. But even in this moment of his anguish and in this time of his trial and this pain and pressure that he's under, he never forgot who God was, who his father was. He never forgot the love that his father had for him. He never forgot that, and he calls on him as father. Jesus acknowledges him as father. He acknowledges that God has a plan. Or if you notice, he says, if it be possible. If it be possible. If it be possible. What Jesus shares with us and shows us is that even though you are in the will of God and you know the way of God, sometimes you're weighed down by the plan of God. Sometimes you want to go, but you, in your humanity, don't feel like you can go. Sometimes the burden seems heavy and too hard to bear. Sometimes the pain seems too intense for you to endure. Sometimes what God commands and asks you to do is really too hard for you to do. Jesus shows us that when he said, if it be possible, he says that because Jesus knows the plan. He understood the purpose of his coming. He understood the plan of God for the redemption of humanity that would take place by his sacrifice on Calvary's cross. He understood that. But yet and still we find him saying, Lord, I know you have a plan. But if it's possible, is there another way? Truth is, sometimes... We don't want to go God's way, but we really want God's will. Let me say that again. Sometimes we don't want to go God's way, even though we really want God's will. And sometimes we want his will to be done another way. 
Because we don't want to necessarily walk down the path that we have to walk down. We don't want to make the sacrifice that we have to make. We don't, have, we don't want to make the decision and the choices that we need to make. But we do want God's will. Amen. Jesus said, if it be possible. I know what you've ordained. I know what you said. But, and I know this plan that you have. But Father, is there another way that you can accomplish this plan with, uh, uh, apart from this path? Can you still redeem humanity? Without me dying on the cross, without me drinking of that bitter cup, without me taking the suffering of the world upon my shoulders, if it's possible, if it's possible, Jesus shows us here human weakness. He said, let this cup pass from me. Jesus is talking to his father. Jesus is being real with God. Jesus is speaking from his heart. What I'm trying to tell you, when we come to God, we can be real with God. We can tell him exactly how we feel. And God is not offended with that. God wants you to be real with him so he can be real in you. You've got to understand Jesus shows us what it means to pray from the heart. To talk to God does not mean you always want what God you want what God wants, but you might not want it the way God has it designed to go. Jesus shows us that. He said, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Jesus, God in the flesh. Jesus, divinity and humanity. Jesus, God and man. Jesus experienced because of his humanity, the fear and doubt that you and I feel. Jesus experienced the pain and suffering that you and I experience. Jesus felt the very things that you feel. That's right. And now, the same Jesus that felt what you feel knows how you feel, but now he sits as our mediator and he, as mediator he understands and he can sympathize with you and with me in our pains in our fears, in our problems in our doubt, in our unbelief, in all of those things that we experience that cause us shame Jesus understands where you are and you can be real with him Amen. He sympathizes with you. We're told in, <clears throat> in Hebrews, we have a high priest that's touched with the feelings of our infirmities, who was tempted and tested in all points, even as we are, yet without sin. What I'm trying to tell you, he understands. You don't have to shy away from him. You can go to him, even in your weakness and in your weariness in your doubt and your disbelief you can still go to him and he understands the last thing I want to share as we see Jesus as he prays from the heart we see a spirit of submission spirit of submission I told you earlier he said if it be possible let this cup pass from me. Lord, I want what you want, but I want it another way. Lord, I know your will, and I know my place in that will, but because of what it's going to cost me, could there possibly be another way? But here we find him. Nevertheless, nevertheless, not as I will, as thou will. Jesus shows us the right spirit, that spirit of submission. But I want to tell you, when you look at this prayer, it didn't start where it ended. It didn't start where it ended, but it was from his heart. 
And when Jesus continued praying, we find that something happened in him as he prayed. He went from that his will to thy will. He went from that place of unwillingness to a place of submission. We see that as Jesus continued in prayer, his anguish had been replaced with the calm and a peaceful submission to the divine will of God. He is now at peace with what God plans. He is, in, he is at peace with God's path. Why? Because he stayed and continued in prayer until he got to where God wanted him to be. I want to tell you, sometimes we need to pray a little longer. Sometimes we need to pray until we get to the place where God wants us. My brothers and sisters, we need to continue on our knees in prayer until we come to that place of submissiveness to the will of God who is our Heavenly Father. We need to pray until we can say, as Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. What I'm trying to tell you, when you pray from your heart to God, God will intervene in you. God would do something supernatural in you and bring you to that place by the Spirit till you can walk in the path that God has planned for you. God will give you peace. Where your life is filled with turmoil, God will do that. In our Lord's Prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, we're made aware of his great agony. He agonized in prayer. The Bible tells us that three times he prayed and he prayed the same thing. My brothers and sisters, he prayed. Listen, he prayed until he got to the place that his will was in line with God's will. That's an important point. You need to pray until your will lines up with his. Amen. Oh, it's interesting when you see Jesus and if Jesus had to pray, we have to pray. And sometimes it's good to invite others to join you with prayer. Intercessory prayer is good. It's good when we gather together, where two or three are gathered, touch and agree in God's enemies. It's good when we can touch and agree in prayer. But we find sometimes, as Jesus shows us, sometimes you just have to go before God by yourself. There's sometimes you can't take anybody with you. But I stop by to tell you, just you and God is more than enough. We need to, my brothers and sisters, get to the place where our heart is burdened for the loss. We need to get to the place where we are burdened by the sins that we commit. Christians shouldn't be happy and satisfied living a sinful, a disobedient life to God. We need to get to the place but in our prayer, we pray like this, as David prayed, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. We need to get to the place. We need to get to the place where we pray from our heart. We need to get to the place where we pray, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. We need to pray, get to the place where we pray, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. My brothers and sisters, I stop by to tell you, if you would go to God in humble submission, if you pray to God, if you would pray to God from your heart, if you would pull on the strings of heaven until you get God's attention, God would change your way of thinking. God would change your attitude. God would change your actions. God would change your life. But you've got to pray from your heart. Father, we thank you for the example that we have from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, as he prayed. We see in his prayer so many things, God. We see that even though we are burdened down and we're pressured, even though we have crises in our lives and we have pains, we still have a Father. And as Jesus acknowledged you, Father, let us not forget that you are a God of love. You are a God that is powerful. You are our protector. 
and you're our provider. As Jesus prayed, he understood that you have a plan and sometimes we might want your will, but might not want it your way. So Father, we pray today that you would help us to understand as we bow before you, your grace and your mercy will pour out upon us and get us to the place where our will lines up with your will. Not only will we want what you want, but we'll want it the way you want it. So help us to understand that. Help us to understand that yes, we have human weaknesses. Sometimes we want to go around the pain. Sometimes we want to avoid that pain, the problem, the test, the trial. But Father, help us to know that if we would just come to you with honesty, pray to you with humility from our heart, that you would give us the grace to be able to bear the cup that's placed before us. And as we continue, Lord, look into you for substance, that you would put us in that place where we can line up with you. We thank you, Father, that you'll do that. We ask now that you would guard this message in the hearts of the hearers. Strengthen us in our weakness. Settle our doubt. Light our dark path. Heal our hurts. Lead us, Lord, in the way that we should go. We thank you for that. We bless your name. And we give you glory. As we leave, Lord, as we in this time of worship, I pray, God, that you would touch the hearts of all that listen to us. May this message give them a deeper understanding and a better understanding of their humanity and, God, your divinity and how we can work together in this to work out your will in our lives. We thank you that you do that. Keep us as we go. Protect us, direct us. Guide us is our prayer. For we do ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.